Hello friends, it's me again. How are you doing? I'd like you to take a guess as to what our video today is going to be about. Is the telepathy working? <laughs> Just joking, it's quite obvious because it's right here behind me. Do you like the display that I've done for you? And for those of you who don't know what that is, these are protein powders. You see, as a teenager, I used to watch a lot of makeup hauls and fashion hauls, especially by someone called Bubs Beauty. Shout out, Bubs! Where I learned everything to do with makeup and all that stuff. And I see a lot of videos that are to do with clothing hauls, bag hauls, restaurant reviews, and even Pokemon card hauls. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it is. So here I am, really wanting to do a haul video, but I don't really haul any of this stuff. And that's when I thought, bing! What if I did a protein powder haul? Ta-da! So that is what brought us here today to our protein powder haul video. But wait, how did I get into protein powders? Well, we're gonna have to take you right back to when I was in university. I went to university in New York, and that is along with LA, a place that is super big on all of these fitness supplements, gyms, everyone has a gym membership, everyone goes to, well not everyone, but a lot of people go to GNC and vitamin shop. Protein, 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 protein. People are very big on protein. And so was my partner. And that's why in our kitchen, we would always have this red or black plastic bottle, this huge one, the one that's the size of two or three of your heads, with just powder. And it was either vanilla or chocolate. And I would always think, who eats powder? I get that there's instant coffee, which doesn't actually taste that good. And there's cocoa powder to make hot chocolate. And then there's baby formula, which is amazing. But then powder for protein? What does that even mean? And it looks so artificial because of the packaging. And there was one time when it was kind of in our kitchen for a really long time, this big bottle taking up space. And I thought, okay, I've got to help get rid of it. And I was kind of curious as to whether or not it was actually something that tasted like chocolate or vanilla. So I opened it and I tried some. And then I was mind blown. Whoa, whoa, this tastes like baby formula powder. And I love that stuff. I miss the days when I could just drink it as a kid. Sometimes when I see it in the supermarket, I do get tempted to buy it though. Gradually, I had some more of it and I tried messing around with it. I googled it and I realized the versatility of it. If you mix it with water, it makes it into a drink. If you mix it with milk, it's a milkshake. You can make ice cream with it, but you have to get the ratio just right. Otherwise, it kind of messes it up. You can bake with it because it helps stick things together. You can sprinkle it on your yogurt, whether it's soy or Greek, and it makes it so much more flavorful, especially the plain ones. And you can eat it raw, just as a powder. Although it's not really recommended for people who don't like eating powders because it kind of gets dry in your mouth, but if you like eating powders like I do, then you're good. Let me show you some screenshots of a conversation where one of my friends basically told me, whoa, there are so many crazy flavors. Dude, you gotta try this. Let's try this. We're not based in the same location, but we wanted to try so many of the flavors. As soon as I saw the flavors that they had, I was hooked. Dude, I have never tried Hokkaido milk and I have never tried matcha protein powder and I've never tried a lot of these flavors, which seems so awesome, like apple crumble and custard. I've never seen that in the shop, have you? And I ended up buying so much that they kind of gave me a lot of protein powder bottles, which I don't really need. <laughs> so let's get into the interesting part, the flavour. For a lot of professional fitness people, the flavour doesn't really matter because they're only eating the powder for the protein. But let's get this clear. When it comes to protein powders, flavour matters to me. It really matters because I use it as something to bake with, to cook with, to sprinkle on my yoghurt, and sometimes I eat it plain. By the way, the macros for my protein are really good. I was really impressed by that and that's probably why I was so willing to try the different flavours because I thought, okay, well, even if it doesn't end up tasting great, I can still use them as a supplement. So what makes a good protein powder flavour? Well, first off, it can't taste too artificial. We're already eating a powder, we're mixing in with a liquid. If it starts tasting like soap or perfume, ugh, you can't eat it. Number two, I think it's also quite important that it matches the flavor that they represent on the bottle. The reason why we buy a specific flavor of protein powder is because we get enticed by what flavor they are selling. So if they say it's going to be apple crumble with custard, we expect it to at least somewhat resemble apple crumble and custard. The smell. The smell can't be atrocious. The smell can't smell like a perfume. It's got to smell like something that you want to eat. If it smells gross, that's going to affect your entire experience. The consistency is also kind of important, which I never thought about before because I thought all the consistencies are the same, but actually they're not. When you start picking ones that are not regular protein powders and maybe are a diet blend or they're vegan, their consistency becomes very different. When you mix it with water, it might end up being gooier or it might not be sticky at all. It might just seem like very watered down stuff. So you've got to be careful with that as well. The last criteria for me is that it has to taste good on its own. Sure, I can add a bit of water, but I shouldn't need to add milk for it to taste good. You know what I'm saying? Do certain flavors taste better when eaten in a certain way? Yes. The milky ones are pretty hard to get wrong. They usually taste really good, whether it is chocolate milk or a vanilla ice cream, you know, it's got a milky feeling to the name. They would work with water, with milk, with baking, in a yogurt. The ones that are somewhat artificial, mmm, 
I don't really enjoy having them. Basically, the ones that taste bad, I end up throwing them into something I'm baking. It masks the flavor and, you know, it helps the stuff stick together. So it serves some sort of purpose and it adds protein. Which flavors did I buy and what did they taste like? Brown sugar milk tea, a delectable sugary dessert, reminiscent of summer bubble teas. Yeah, it smells so good. It's got a kind of brownish tint to it. Matcha latte, bittersweet milky green tea leaves. It smells exactly like matcha. If you've ever bought loose powder matcha, this is what it smells like. And I kind of suspect that they just got unscented, unflavored protein powder and just put matcha powder into it. But whatever works. Hojicha latte. Haha. <laughs> A name that sounds good but actually tastes like rubbish. Sorry, that's not a very good way of describing it. Nose crinkling, deceptive yellow cardboard powder. I thought it was gonna taste so good, but it didn't. You can see that I'm pretty bitter about it. I was really excited for that one. Hokkaido milk, the adult version of milk formula. Eaten mess, pink plastic soap powder. Sticky toffee pudding, a low sugar sponge cake, which is actually pretty tasty. Vanilla and raspberry. That's pretty much vanilla dipped in perfume. Apple crumble and custard. Oh gosh, I love apple crumble and I especially love apple crumble and custard. And this tasted like milk in an apple flavored gummy. Milk in an apple flavored gummy. Blah, 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 blah. I challenge you. Say it three times. Milk in an apple flavored gummy. Milk in an apple flavored gummy. Milk in an apple flavored gummy. Something like that. Chocolate fudge brownie. The diet version. <laughs> Watered down hot chocolate. Salted caramel. Vegan version. Sugary paper. Carrot cake. Vegan version. Bitter tasting powdered flour. Most of these were whey protein powders. And then I had one that was diet. The macros are really good, but they're not good enough to make the flavor worth it. In fact, the macros were not as good as the matcha latte, which was kind of strange. The Vegan protein powders, ooh. The consistency is not what you usually get with protein powders. It kind of put me off at first. The two flavors that I had that were vegan were carrot cake and salted caramel. The carrot cake one was so disappointing. I love carrot cake and this one was gross. The salted caramel actually kind of grew on me. I started to really like it with a little bit of cocoa powder, the 100% baking cocoa powder and yogurt. Something about it was just really yummy. Or when you mix it with water, it actually forms a kind of dessert-like texture. Not exactly like dessert, so definitely don't get your hopes up. But it was okay. Maybe it's the salt in it. It's kind of refreshing. Oh, another thing to watch out for is caffeine content. I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine. I have stopped drinking coffee. Even though I really like the matcha and the brown sugar milk tea, they both had caffeine in it. In fact, the matcha powder had over 40 milligrams of caffeine per serving. And that's quite a lot. It's like a full cup of green tea. If you're going for regular protein powders, the milk flavored ones are always safer, always safer. Let's get into a bit of the pros and cons of using protein powders. The good or the pros. It does lead to feeling fuller for longer, but you have to take it in moderation. It's a bit healthier than other snacks. For example, if you want to bake a cake and you don't want to use too much sugar and you don't want to use too much flour, you can actually make some sort of a mix, check the ratios online though, and bake something that is high in protein and doesn't have much sugar. Oh, one that was really important to me recently is that it doesn't go bad. In fact, it's quite hard for it to go bad. If you're going through something like quarantine, your fridge isn't working or you don't even have a fridge, then it's the perfect thing to have on hand in case you get peckish or hungry and you don't want to wait too long. It's an easy snack with protein. The bad or the cons. It can get really messy, especially if you accidentally breathe or sneeze, the powder just flies everywhere and then it's a huge tidy up sesh. It's expensive. Protein powder can be anywhere between 15 US dollars to 50 US dollars. Some even more depending on how clean the protein is or I don't know how exclusive the brand is. So you definitely should be careful on how much you spend, but you can sometimes get discounts. So it's good to keep an eye out. Another con is that they usually come in huge packets, which is really difficult if you just want to try a flavor and see whether or not you like it. It's a commitment to a flavor that you're not even sure about. A bit of a risk. It's like a gamble, you know what I'm saying? You have to be careful of sweeteners. Apparently, and don't quote me on this, but based on my personal experience and what I've read up online, a lot of the sweeteners that end with ol, so things like malitol, xylitol, are quite hard to digest. Definitely watch for how much and what sort of sweeteners they use. Another ingredient to watch out for is caffeine. You don't want to end up having some protein powder before sleep and then not being able to sleep. You have to sleep to rest your body. Conclusion. Some final advice for protein powder shoppers. Don't take the names too literally. It's not the actual dessert. It's never going to taste the same. The closest that I've had is things like vanilla ice cream, cookies and cream, and chocolate. The matcha powder is actually pretty close because it just tastes like matcha. Each pack is a lot. These big packs are one kilo. So it will take you some time to work through it. So be careful of how much you end up ordering. And if you don't like the flavor, you're going to be stuck with it for a while.
Unless it's an emergency, you should not be having protein powder to replace a meal. It's artificial at the end of the day, it's a powder. It's just, you know, to have some fun, to add a bit of taste to something and maybe up your protein intake. The stranger the name, the higher the chance there is that it will go wrong. Eaten mess, yuck. And finally, my favorites are Optimum Nutrition's Cookies and Cream. They have a really good vanilla ice cream. I've also tried a really yummy strawberry shortcake before. From my protein, I would say that my favorites were by far Hokkaido milk and brown sugar milk tea if it didn't have caffeine. Sticky toffee pudding is, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's okay. The matcha is pretty good as a drink. That'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the protein powder haul. Let me know in the comments below whether or not you take protein powder and what's your favorite flavor. Oh, and if you had to pick one out of all of this lot, which one would you pick? If you did enjoy the video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification button so that you know when a new video comes out. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, Stay safe and healthy. Until next time. Bye.